Okay, today class we're going to uh, pull up a simple Word document and uh, one of the assignments is going to be for you to create a, a Word memo um, detailing something creative but uh, will be certain criteria that will have to be met but uh, most of you guys should have already worked with some Word document at, at some point in time so I just go ahead and click on Word obviously uh, the the plain vanilla document comes up but there are a lot of things that you can actually uh, do in Word. So on the assignment, uh, if you create a memo, uh, you're going to have something similar to this. So who is it going to? Who is it from? From would be from uh, yourself. Like let's say it's a memo about um, the hiking club that you guys have. Uh, what the date is. What the subject is. And then you're going to have a long list of typed out information. So, information about the hike. All right, so I'm going to have you guys write up a memo. Let's say you're in a hiking club. Who's it going to? It's going to your fellow hikers. Who's it from? Uh, yourself, uh, Joe, college student. What the date is, what the subject is, the future hike uh, that's upcoming in uh, the month of July and then uh, your whole paragraph about the inf and the information about the the hike um, so maybe uh, even more so important than what you write or type out in that memo are the different things that you can do so uh, if I highlighted all of my my text and I want to change the font if you look right here I can change it different to a uh, to a different style Arial is a pretty popular style especially in business I can also change the size of, of those words and letters, right? So you see how big it is uh, at 28, but let's just go ahead and change it, leave it at 20. What I can also do is I can make it bold. You see it changes from regular to bold. I can put a ta make it in italics, kind of slants it sideways, and I can also underline it. Now, let's take off the italics because that looks a little crazy. Uh, what else do I want to do to it? Well, let's say that I wanted to uh, highlight it. I just go ahead and say I like the neon galactic green. Click on that. I can highlight uh, the information. Uh, if I want to change the color of the font, then I go here and I say, you know what? I want it to be red, right? So now I've got the neon green uh, highlighting in the background, and I've also got uh, it bolded, underlined and also uh, the font is red. If I want to do something like uh, put bullet points on it, I just click there. Now, you see I clicked there because that was the only one that was highlighted. If I make a mistake, just simply go back and hit the arrow that goes backwards and that is the undo arrow. If I highlight everything and I click there, you see I get a bullet point in front of each one of these lines. Go to undo and now instead of having bullet points, I want numbers, right? one two three four five undo now instead of that hit on your drop down let's see what else you have if you want to do letters capital letters a b c d e right there you go uh... any uh, uh, uh... a lot of different variety of things that you can actually do in word if you're used to typing up memos or inserting all kinds of different things uh... you'll know what to do in a word document like if i just go ahead and click this uh insert uh, tab up here and I want to add let's say I want to add a, a piece of art I can go ahead and search for it uh, let's go ahead and put in a bear and uh, 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 clip art will come up see that bear guy right there that's who I want so if I want to add a picture I simply uh, go to insert and clip art you type in the word or the word bear and there's my bear right there just double click on it and it populates right into your document all kind of different things that you can do uh, if I want to insert a shape and I want to say hey where's the bears nose you can go ahead and click on the block arrows I click there I just click again and there's my arrow pointing at the bears nose I can even change the color of uh, of the inside of the of the arrow I just click there turns it to orange turn it back to blue a uh, simple tutorial on utilizing uh, uh, word documents uh, all kinds of different things I want you guys to search through these tabs if you're not used to word 
uh, you know, lots of different things that you can you can actually do in this document. And uh, next tutorial, we'll be going over uh, resume and cover letter. Definitely want you guys to get acclimated to creating a, a suitable resume and cover letter uh, for when you get out there in the job force if you're not already out there. All right, class. Uh, we're going to cover. Uh, we'll search in the internet for a suitable template for your resume and cover letter. I will let you guys know that if you do not have an appropriate resume, you will not even get an interview. Uh, there are plenty of different pitfalls that people fall into um, if you don't have an appropriate uh, email address, right? Uh, you know, I I had a resume last week. And I looked at the individual's email address, and it wasn't an appropriate email address for business. So I uh, shredded the resume. So little things like that can get you right out of the running for a job. Um, so just you can go to Yahoo, Google, uh, Google Chrome, Firefox, anywhere you go on a browser, and just type in um, resumes or resume template and you should see a variety of different templates now I'm not one to say that one resume format is the best uh, I've had someone even contact me uh, meaning a recruiter uh, before and uh, basically tell me how bad my resume was and uh, you know I had to make some some adjustments so sometimes it just depends on who the employer is and uh, what they like but uh, what I want you guys to do is go you know do a search and find a resume template that you think is suitable. Uh, up here I have a few different options. So you see this individual, she has her name, has her address, her email address, and her phone number. Nice, uh, you know, regular font, nothing crazy. Um, I, had a, I had a buddy and his name, uh, it was about a 72 font. It was just, it was huge, but that's definitely not appropriate on a resume. Uh, qualifications, education, and then uh, academic and professional experience. Uh, if you just go over to the right, now you see a different one. This is this individual's profile, their education, related coursework, professional experience, uh, memberships, skills. Uh, sometimes you have uh, documents that supplement your, um, your resume and you can include those. Uh, some people's resume should be one page. Some people who might have a, a little bit more extensive history uh, should be about two pages. But I'll tell you one thing: you should definitely not uh, have your resume stretching back to like the 1980s. I also have a buddy who did that, submitted his resume, and he, you know, had his work history since uh, the late 70s. And I said uh, employers definitely do not want to see all of that information on your resume. Uh, if you see this is another example, this is Donna Kim has her education at the top. Uh, experience sometime may depend on if if you know you, if you don't have a lot of in the education area, maybe that's not what you want to lead with, right? Uh, but if you do, maybe that is what you want to lead with. So there are all kinds of different examples. I want you guys to all um, look for a template, easy to find. They're all over the internet. Not saying that one's better than the other. Uh, and then I, I want you to, uh, you know, upload that to your Dropbox because that's going to be one of your assignments. Now, one thing that people often forget that goes along with the resume is their cover letter, right? So if you look right here, it has the cover letter with a little funny name, Mr. John J. Job Seeker, right? And uh, has a one, two, three success lane. That's where he lives. Uh, has his uh, has a date. Uh, individuals. Uh, that person who he's sending the cover letter to and you know, who is the hiring manager and one thing I will say with the cover letter what you need to do is you actually need to make sure that it's directed towards an individual and or their company if you make it specific to their company they know that you just didn't go to some site and send your resume and your cover letter to just every single job that was out there uh, you have to um, uh, kind of customize it to who you're dealing with so if you see here, uh, you know, same thing, go to Yahoo, Google, anywhere and just do a search on a cover letter template and you can find one that you like or one that's most industry specific to you. Uh, it says, I'm submitting my resume for consideration for the marketing manager position located in your Manhattan office as advertised on www.indeed.com, right? So this is a, is a pretty good one. If you don't like that one, 
you can just go over and you see all kinds of different uh, cover letter templates they're all over the internet uh, you guys can pretty much tell uh, what's a good cover letter and what's a bad cover letter um, you know some of them I would say are better than others but I'll let you be the judge of that uh, send them to me uh, I've you know had students before uh, who've had trouble with their uh, resumes and cover letter and it's something that we could really easily uh, fix and handle sometimes it's just somebody else looking at it even even somebody such as myself uh, somebody could look at my resume and say hey you know why don't you do this or why don't you do that as opposed to uh, how I currently have it uh, we should all always be open and receptive uh, to feedback because it will help us uh, enormously down the road so that's a resume and cover letter that will be detailed in your assignments on what you will need to submit